Did Vaskalananda used to grumble at uh, Bengal Mott? Why had you kept this young Brahmachari with the old sadhus? But I was relishing it. You see, that I was put among the old sadhus. <coughs> now, uh, I joined, I'm very really happy to join. You see, I did not choose it. It happened like this. That I was drawn there. One day, suddenly, Swami Prabhupada telephoned me. I was in the office. So he telephoned me, Would you like to do something in Ramakrishna Mission? He said, Paused for a few seconds. Just 30 minutes back, I had given my resignation letter. I said, Yes, just 30 minutes. Minutes back, I have given my religious letter. So, because I wanted to snap this. Because otherwise, every day we are going to office and this thing will continue. I said, I understood that there is some other purpose in life, so I must snap it. So then, this came. I paused for a few seconds and then said, okay, but uh, I need two months' time. Because, uh, you say, one month is the your, uh, notice I have to give to the organization and one month I wanted to remain alone without seeing a human face. So, this was my result. So, two months. So, it is okay, two months. He said, but what is the place? He said, Belgoria, Ramakrishna Mission. And I said, okay, I have heard the name of Belgari, I have never been to Belgari. And when I really, you see, went there, within a few days, the head of the center, Swami Santoshanandaji, I said, all me through a beyond. He said, we were here for two days, but you were not coming to me. I said, that Swami, I noticed that you were very busy. You have to run this whole thing and also this uh, your college. Uh, so I find you always busy. He told me that I shall be busy, but you should come. I, said, I shall find time for you. So each day I used to go to him. He used to give me almost two hours. All my barks and leaves and why you say I used to put to him. And he had a wonderful memory. You see, he used to recount things in a very vivid way. Uh, things of the past. So that was a great, you see, game for me. He said, I noticed Swantishwadamaji that uh, five times a day he used to sit for spiritual practice. Five times a day. Yes, and it was a very big campus, and he was old, but he used to go to every corner of the things to know what is happening, where, etc. If any of the students should fall sick, he would be by the side, he said. Uh, here, there, you see, I have seen, uh, for the first time, I saw a person who is equally concerned with every human being. You see, no matter if, uh, what his status in life, etc. So, I began to, you see, think that maybe it is because uh, there are the children of the Holy Mother. Holy Mother was like this, you see. She was the mother of all. So, a little you see, quality of the Holy Mother uh, has come to them. So I have seen him this way. Then, uh, you see, this morning, the subject of harmony of monastic members that was, you see, touched upon. So what he used to do, you know, maybe it is a 
ancient practice, maybe it is the founder, the Nirvana Swami, was also a great saint. He had started it. The practice was this, that after the service in the temple is over, they will all gather in the office where the head of the institution would sit and other, you see, both monks and brahmacharis, they would sit there and there used to be some reading from some holy books, you see. And after that, uh, they used to have a very light, uh, you know, snacks, some take a little tea or one biscuit or something like that. But each one would discuss the problems in his department. What problems are there? That means all the big event of the day regarding that. Uh, you know. And uh, the head of the center would listen. And uh, all the, you say, you are talking about you, for example, uh, you say, I used to, I used to be assistant to almost all the Swamis. Uh, and uh, the Swamis used to be absent, all the Swamis between 8 and uh, 2, 8 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. So for this time, everything I used to do, whatever I say is in there. So, uh, so everyone would participate in this, but then the head would listen and give his verdict that you do it in this way. Yes. Normally, so uh, through these discussions, you see, there was a kind of Everyone is to know what is the impact of the other person and what is this, you see. And there is to be a sharing, sharing of views. And thereby, you see, that was one thing I noticed. And another thing, I said, before going to bed, especially a little before 10 in the evening, all should go to the head of the center, Sanchatrami shake hands, you see, and say good night. So this was the practice, you see, this, these are small things, but, uh, you see, paving uh, the way for harmony. So that is another thing. And he was very much, one day, he was dictating a letter to me. He said, he said that uh, I shall give you a dictation to uh, so, you see, there was a stack of paper, I took just one paper. Suddenly in the middle of this, where did you give this paper? I said, here is the stack of paper. What have you done? This is, a, you see, this is the paper for the college. I am dictating you from the student's home. <laughs> that means uh, the division between mission and mort, you see. But this is for mort. You have taken me mission's property for it. Just one paper. A four size paper. He says, ah. what have you done? This is a, a, the property of the mission. And I am dictating for the mort. So, you see, I understood that there is so much particular about this thing. Just one A four sheet paper. <laughs> So, these things I noticed, you see. And another thing I noticed in his life, you see, he used to tell me that you are become, you, are, you have a, you see, your intention is to rise spiritually. To rise spiritually, you must efface the memories of your earlier life. You, see. Yeah. you don't forget them, but the memories should be faint, you see, he used to say. You see. So, uh, then, and every day, so many anecdotes, you see, 
Voglio rimanere, era sempre malandra, era sempre malandra, sono tu di Alanda, ho detto, sai cosa per Alanda? One day I asked him that, he said, you do not allow uh, the boys to take eggs, but I have seen a chart of 1928 in the Gudam where there is this, you see. I find that the eggs used to be given. So at one time there used to be, and you have stopped it at some, some point. What is the reason? He said, Swami Akandananda came to visit the students, and he did not approve of it. He said, These are young students, he said, that you should not give them eggs. So he stopped it. So, so many small things I learned from them. One day I was, I say, I was standing uh, in the courtyard and he and another Swami, who was also old, a disciple of Swami Brahmananda, hmm, used to call him Priti Maharaj Swami Vishwapadandi. They are talking. And I was hearing at that time, you see. They were in the Baranda city, I was in the court here. As they were saying that these boys do not know that one should not put on dhutis like this. That is, we are putting on, you see, dhutis done. You see, that is, when you big dhoti, when you fold it, it becomes double. They say that they use not to do it. Austerity, they say. Yeah. They used to put dhoti like this, as I am doing, which is civil dhoti. Yeah. So, they say, they were small lessons, they say. He, he did not scold me, but uh, they were talking about these boys, these days, they say. When I came to Belmont, I also found that they were giving us very costly dhotis. And I used to wonder why they are doing it. You know, they should give us very coarse, ordinary dhotis. Chaitanya had said to Ramanath, he says, he said, Gramma Kathana Kahibe, Gramma Kathana Shunibe, Bhaduna Kahibe, or Bhaduna Puribe. Omani ke mandire Krishna naam shadalave manushe bhile vila kaptakho bhile. This is this. Sadhana, he talked about to Bhagavana, I say. So, Bhagavana Khaiva and Bhagavana Puri made this was in great times. Since of boyhood we had ideals like Pisira, like we see, Vidyasaga, these are the persons, I see. We used to esteem. And in high esteem. So then I understood the no. Giving us course do this will be a costlier affair for the Lord. Because the president, you see, especially Swami Gersha and the, he opened the floodgates to the you see, to the people who want to receive initiation. Before him, it was to be always individual, you see. He made it collective, you see, he's a person. So suddenly, affluence, a relative affluence came to Belumot. Because during initiation, they used to give dhotis. So there is excess of dhotis. To buy course dhotis, you have to buy it. You see, I understood this. They say, and then I remember the words of Sarjini Naidu, who said about Mahatma Gandhi, it costs the Congress much to keep the Mahatma poor. <laughs> so, no, so that was the thing. So they were, I mean, the, the sadhus of old, they were uh, living in another atmosphere. And, uh, you see, I know that uh, you see, sometimes Santa Swami told me that olden days they used to use the 
margins of newspapers for small notes on history uh, etc. and certainly uh, envelopes uh, envelopes they used to use for uh, rough use say. so like that they used to uh, before before you know, using a matchbox they used to write the date on it on which date in the they have the granite, you see. They say, like that, you know, it, that means that frivolity was the idea. Mm. So it matches well with uh, the ideals of sannyasa, because sannyasin has to be above matter, above materialism. So frivolity must be ingrained, you see, in this, in this system, otherwise you cannot rise very high in spiritual life. Frivolity should be there. So this thing I learned from them. And the way, you see, uh, he used to reminisce about many things. For example, our Holy Mother, you see, he, he told me that he received the mantra, but that made him morose. He said, Holy Holy Mother, but he became morose. He thought that he would become a monk and he had received a mantra from a lady. You see? <laughs> and this made him morose. So, in that state of mind, he went to he said, work in our relief program in Sagardeep during the especially mid-January, there is a confluence of the what is there and normally there used to be much, you know, there is a lack of hygiene and so many people are there, so there is to be disease, there is a lack of food, you say, so for that a relief used to be there, even now they do it. So he went there you know, and a senior monk noticed that this boy was morose. So he called him and asked him, what is the reason? You are a young boy, why should you be morose all the time? Is there any particular reason? And then he said that I would like to become a monk, but unfortunately I have been <laughs> initiated by a lady. This is how the lady. So the monk understood the problem. So he opened his small suitcase and from there as he took out a letter written by Sai Vivekananda. There he was talking about the Holy Mother, so he read it out. He said, even then I was not convinced. He said, I came to Calcutta and went to taste Saradhani. And put certain questions to him. He never told me what questions. Put certain questions to her. And then the way in which she gave me reply, I understood that she was not an ordinary person. Yes. So he said, he said that I will not divorce this thing. My lack of respect to the Holy Mother because I know that then the children of Sri Ramakrishna would ask me not to come to Vedu <laughs> So that was, uh, you see, the way, uh, you see, they were, but towards the end of his life, so full of, the Holy Mother uh, was accepted fully, you see. Uh, he eventually, he died, he died on my lap. And yes, in the last moment he said, like this, he said, that I am a child of the mother, I am not afraid. So, that is Swami Sankrasanandi. Swami Vireshwaranandaji, Vireshwaranandaji, I, when I once went to meet him, I said, talk to him. 
and I did not understand that he was so busy. The man must be busy. You cannot imagine the business because uh, everything was on the general uh, secretary. He had an assistant, Swami Bhagavan, on the team, but he was the general secretary. All the time he used to be busy. So, and in the only after this, uh, your um, this vesper service is to over, and then uh, you see people used to come to do visits to the present model, I mean, Swami Maloha Kamaji, and then only he would enter into President Mahadeva's room to brief him about uh, what has happened, he said, the whole day, the big events, uh, the whole order, he said, he used to be with him for some 20 to 30 minutes every day. Uh, and he was always very unashamed, he never, uh, he is not, he is not very full shot, always half shot, he said. Uh, very unashamed, uh, say, uh, Prabhu Maharaj, Swami Gershavad Abhiji. So, once I went directly to his office to talk to him, <laughs> he understood, you see, he came down, you see, with me, yeah, and told him, Gumbhyananda, please talk with this boy, you see. <laughs> And then Gambhara sat with me to talk with me. That was me. Then I asked Swami and Gurudhanandaji that uh, I would like to see monks from close quarters. I have never lived with monks. So Kimasi Gambhara Kim is necessary, you see. How <laughs> that? So, he goes the subject to Prabhu Maharaj. Prabhu Maharaj selected for me Devgar, that I should go to Devgar. So there I lived, it was the, it was the Xmas vacation of 19, uh, it was the vacation of 1964. I said, Devgar, I said, Sridhar was the, Head of the center. Onadi Maharaj was the chief warden. I was very close to him in the world. And the young boy called Dilip Das was the headmaster. I knew him already in Mott. Within a few weeks of his joining here, he became the headmaster of Deva. Anyhow, so that is one uh, thing that Guru Maharaj was so kind that he made this arrangement for me. Then, you see, Prabhu Maharaj himself, you, see, you know, perhaps many of you, that uh, Sai Madhavanandaji was I had a premonition that uh, he would not survive perhaps his, you know, he would not be able to take this voyage to um, Mumbai. I even asked Prabhu can you stop this? You see, this. He said, how can you stop it? It is the inauguration of the temple at, at uh, Mumbai. I say, everything has been published, you cannot stop it. And it happened like, exactly like this. He came back sick and, uh, you see, he never recovered from this sickness. So, when he passed away, it was, October 65 and then uh, Prabhu Maharaj and Bharat Maharaj they went because there is a question of succession they say so they went to Bengal uh, to Swami Yadishwaranandaji Yadishwaranandaji was refusing to become president so he said that is his it, is, it was futile to make me president because I did not live very long. Yeah. Because Swami Brahmadandaji had made the forecast 
that you, you believe up to you say, yeah, you have already attained almost that age. So you don't need much. So, but <laughs> they prevailed upon him. I said that, you know, please come. So that he came. They decided that he would become the president, but they did not announce it. And he did not remember. As he passed away. So there was a backlog. Then they, you know, the, the trustees of the Lord, they selected Rumaraj himself to become the president. So at that, that transition point, I was there already. I had already, you say, joined the order at that time. So from the very beginning, I said, oh, see, um, Santa Swamiji brought me to Prabhu Maharaj when he was president and uh, you see, and that within a few months, which is not normal, because within a few months, you see, with his permission, I had my head shaved. So that permission to my gave the suggestion of your Shantashana. So from the very man, and they saw one thing in Prabhu Maharaj, that whenever he used to visit any branch center, uh, for example, I remember that uh, when he visited Patna, he was a Brahmachari there, and another Brahmachari was there, who is no more in the order. So they were there. Prabhu so Maharaj was listening to them, you see, and this he did in each center, you see. And two years later he would declare in the assembly of monks that I have talked to all the young you see, members of our order, you see, the young brahmacharis, you see, all who are, uh, and they find a big frustration of them, and we have to do something about it, you see. He said, yes. In 1971, one day, you see, he, had a, um, he made this system that each day he would talk with one brahmachari, intimately, one. So when my turn came, I asked him, Maharaj, we have to go by say, bus and trams, we have to travel. And whenever we ride this bus and tram, say, we hear criticism of the order. We criticize the Ramakrishna order. Are we doing something wrong that they are doing so on this? First he said, no, the whole world has to take one day the idol of Ramakrishna. But then he paused. And this was not in my mind, but of his own he began to say. He paused, yes, we have done one mistake. He said, it is your duty he said, to rectify this mistake when you grow up, he said. And he went on saying that we have accepted these big institutions like Ranjapur, Rahula, etc. Because the leaders of the country told us that the country is independent now. So you do your might, you see. You contribute your might for the development of the country and you can do something in the field of education. So, at their encouragement, we started this. But having started this, we now find that what Swamiji wanted, we are not doing that. You see, it is mainly, you see, serving the middle class and the upper middle class, not the poor people. You see our educational institutions, by and large. So you should rectify it. Since then, after this I found him, you see, talking in this way almost everywhere. He went to Purulia for the Silver Jubilee and one of our crazy monks went to him 
<laughs> he was saying that it has been very difficult to work here, Maharaj. I said, uh, said, what is your difficulty? He said that boys do not, you see, they sleep without mosquito cartoons and I, I have to chase the boys that you plus. You see, you have your mosquito cartoons and arranged and then you sleep, etc. And the Swami was smiling, Pro Maharaj, smiling, you see. He was saying that do things for the poor, otherwise you will have much more difficulty. He said, he did not understand it. Who went and continued? They did not, you see, arranged their mosquito cartoons. <laughs> so, so this was in his mind and he presided over many many projects uh, for the poor. All these things, Pallimangal and this and that, came during this time. So that was the uh, thing and he used to say that in the last days of the Holy Mother, the news came to him that the son of Balaram Bosch has passed away and before his passing away he has uh, executed a, a will in favor of Ramakrishna Martin Mission, I say. Hearing this, the Holy Mother replied, had he given something for the poor? I say, and now, see this was her remark. So, Prabhupada used to say, look here, I say. The, you see, Sana Bhagavan Bhushu had say, executed the will in favor of the order, you see, which bears the name of Ramakrishna. Yet, the Holy Mother was making this remark. Has he given something for the poor? You see. So he was so much, you see, this thing, this concern for the poor occupied him much. And this is the who, your uh, Prabhu Maharaj, who talked with the then Minister Pai, there was a minister called Pai at the center. He talked with him and arranged for having the tax reduced. You see, if you donate for Ramakrishna Martin Mission, then you can have your tax reduced, you see. So, uh, this, uh, this was done not only for Ramakrishna Martin Mission, many other similar organizations. But it is at his suggestion that uh, Minister Pai did it. You see. Um, so these are the things. I mean, he's the only president, I think, he said, to my knowledge, who visited all the centers of the order in India except Mansadi. Mansadi is a very difficult center. You see. So. Uh, he visited all the centers at that time. Uh, so that was his, that was to bring unity and cohesion. I, say. I remember uh, during the convention of 1980, uh, suddenly a senior Swami was on the dais. He said that in the, I say, in the time of pause for food, he suggested people from the south go to the south of the mart. People from the western country go to the western part of the, you see, like that. And suddenly, you see, uh, Prabhupada was on the dais. He, was, he did not change this idea. He immediately made the current. We are here for unifying people, not for dividing people. Why should the people of south should go to the south? You see. <laughs> Everybody should be at all places where what they want, you see. So this was another thing is this unification. So this is Prabhu Maharaj's, you see. And till the last he, you see, and he had a so great an idea, you see, he also told me, uh, so he asked this question also to him, that, you see, we read about Mamunasha, and removing our desires, etc. for Mukti. Again, we find that uh, you die in Vedas and you get Mukti. It doesn't match. Yes, then he did not argue, he said that Holy Mother said so, you see. 
Alpananda Swami <laughs> told him that here is a fly dying, is a lying dead in Kashi. Will it get Mukti? Other said, Alpananda said, yes. And when Radhu wanted to go away from Banaras, he wanted to take in the, you see, the bird in the cage. Mother said, no, you want to go, you go away, but let this bird remain. It will have, you see, it will attain Kashi, that is liberation. So that way, so, and he also said, she also said, you see, she quoted that those who cannot make it, this pilgrimage to Kashi or Vrindavan, etc., what would happen to them? I said, said, if they have faith in places like Dakshineshra, like Belur, I said, it will be equally fruitful. So when he became very, very sick, I said, and the trustees proposed that he should go to the hospital, he said, please do not do it. You do whatever you like, but let me stay here to Belur. So it was done for him. Yes, His room became like a hospital, but he remained in the uh, even, uh, even, you see, his condition was very serious, you see, uh, because it was an advanced stage of cancer. And uh, even, uh, you see, 72 hours before his passing away, he was taking administrative decisions. So he was till the last, and he used to repeat again and again, you see, the words of the Bhagavad Gita. Mamusmara Jyutraja. That you remain me. I saw him many times. People are making obeisance to him, but he is doing japa. He is doing japa. See, so this was continuing. These words, you see, Ma Manusma Yudhyacha, he has to quote very often. So this is Swami Bhirishwarananda. Bhutishwarananda ji, he happened to be my teacher in Belurmat. So I saw him from close quarters. One day, you see, we had charm, the way he was, you see, taking very if you ask him a question, he would give an answer. If you go deeper, he will go deeper. Like that. That was his method. So one day, Jagannath, who is the son of and a British monk, now, in those days a Brahmachari, and I made a plan that today we would stop the class. We would stop the class, I say, and we would ask Swami Bhutishwanda Ji, to discuss one good subject, which is dear to your heart, that what does the scripture say about you know, this eschatological voice? That means, you see, a person dies, then he is in different places, places, locus, and he is reborn. The whole process what the Hindu scriptures say about this. You see. So he agreed to this. You see. He agreed to this and uh, discussed with us. Uh, discussed with us uh, that uh, helped us very much you see, to have an overall view of the, because different Upanishads discuss this uh, thing a li little differently. There is a problem, of course, Brahma Sutras, they try to harmonize this thing, but this is a vast subject and used to be a preoccupation with the metaphysicians of all. So he tackled this, you see, in a brilliant way that I remember. That is one thing I noticed in him. Another thing I noticed in him that, uh, you see, I never saw him getting enraged. You see. Once he asked his 
He said, when he, you see, after his passing away, he asked his principal attendant, Swarubhutananda. He said, not Swarubhutananda. So I asked him, Swarubhutananda, have you seen him ever getting angry? He said, yes, once he became angry with me. I said, what happened? So I, said, I said, I have never seen him become angry. See, he said that he had come out and had forgotten to bring his charger. <laughs> and he was angry with me. I said. So, um, it is a rare thing, I have never seen him. Always come, you see. Yeah. He used to, once I asked him, Swami, you are taking Upanishad uh, classes, but I don't understand what is the reason for these classes. You see, if you read the Gospel, there is everything in the Gospel, so why should we, you say, uh, read the Upanishads? He says that, what a peculiar proposition. <laughs> what do you think? He said that you have to grow up. People will they say, come to you for explanation of the Upanishads. How can you? This is our heritage, you see. You must know your heritage, you see. Yeah. So that is, uh, you see. So we always feel very free with him. I say, we not to leave. Uh, yeah. I never saw him, you say, I never saw him uh, hurrying up. We are going together, you say, by plane. Uh, he would go to Jalpaiguri, I would go to Tripura. You see, in those days, vehicles were very less. And, uh, so, same way. You see, I told him, and we were in the waiting, the Swami, maybe you would miss the plane. You see, ah, let it be, what did you say? Why do you worry about it? <laughs> He was like that. <laughs> so that was Swami Bhutashwara And when he was president and I used to go from Geneva, I say, all the days I used to be in Belmont, each morning I used to go to him and put him, put questions to him and he would give answers. Sometimes Chetanaranda would be there, you see, he would also put questions. You see, he would, uh, attacking these questions in a brilliant way. It was brilliant in, I say, this respect. Uh, and uh, very, I say, I, the other day I was asking him, I say, you were so many years in Belmont, and Vrishananda is asking him, which uh, monk has, I say, has impressed you most? He named Vrishananda. So this is a great, uh, he's a great Swami and I was privileged to, to study under him, I say. So we did not uh, look upon him as Vice President or President, I say, or dear teacher, I say. That, is, that was uh, at least my attitude, or dear, dear teacher, I say. So which other monk you want to learn about? Madhavamji. Madhavanji, I say, Madhavanji, my, I say, I, when, I, when I wrote to him, I say, for initiation, I was not fully prepared for it. There is still much atheism in me, I say. Whether God exists or not, etc., I say, I was not sure about this thing. So, as an experiment, I thought to that if I get initiation, my mind will change, and with that changed mind, I may arrive at the correct decision, I say, about it. So, as an experiment, I say, I did it, and it was granted. So, I had my initiation, I was sincere, I was doing, and after a few months I found that nothing was happening, you see. Nothing was happening and I was still uh, not convinced that God exists. 
he said. So I was thinking of going to him again and telling him frankly that I you see, received this initiation because of, you see, and because of my attitude of experimenting upon it. So, you see, since nothing is happening, I should stop, you see, doing yoga. You see, I was thinking of and that time something happened and prevented me from it, from this. So, uh, you see, once I had a one-to-one -one talk with him, arranged by Sri Pramodhananda Jiri. It was something like, maybe something like 25 minutes, you see. But I saw that there was a long queue outside the room. So he was hesitating to prolong it, you see, seeing that the, see, many people were waiting. Uh, you see, uh, it was the time for salutations of the devotees. In the middle of that, this was arranged. Yes. So it was, but it was a tremendous profitable for me. I had some doubts and personal things. I was not, uh, you see, I was thinking whether to join the order or not. I yes. said. I didn't know what is good for me. You see, all those questions uh, discussed and certain other things also. It was those things are private. I shall not go into this. But, uh, you see, we held him even. He was uh, such a, you see, because he was the general secretary for so many years and so I had to take a disciplinary action against him. Even those swamis, he is true. He took this action and tremendous veneration for him because of his life. Because of his life. So he told me, he told me that one day early morning he entered into his room and I said, Swami, I have come to uh, where are you? I don't find you. you know, he said that I am uh, between the wall and the court. How is it that you have? So I have fallen and I cannot get up. You see? And he had already broken his, you know, one of the yes, bowls and lest the attendants should be disturbed in the middle of the night. He remained quiet and was doing japa there in that condition. You see? He, he was such a, you see. So Prabhupada was told me that he changed his sandals which are worn out and uh, so the Swami was reprimanded for it. And that, why did you do that? So, uh, he was uh, this, this, this old style of frugality. Uh, he was very scholarly. But when they asked him, what books shall I read? He said, he me, he said why, should you, why should you give your attention to reading? He said, but then he said that a few books you can read. Yeah, the new book which has come out is Shalik, which he himself edited. You see. And Sri Prabhupada has told me that uh, Abhuni Maharaj, Sri Prabhupada was telling him again and Swami, please go through this book. He said, without your editing, I shall not publish it. So he sat one. Morning, you see, sat one morning, asked for the book, this book, that book, etc. And he walked long hours at a stretch, you see. You see, it was already afternoon. He forgot his everything, you see. He was reminding him, this is our food, you see. He said, no, let him, he finished it and then told Ramadhani that it should be dispatched today. He finished editing of the whole book, you see, everything. Yeah. So, they, so he asked me to read that book, he asked me to read the letters of Swami, Turiyalandaji, etc. He, he said that don't, you say, give your attention, on, and thereby he saved me. I had this, uh, you see, too much going into books, etc. So this was in my eye, I understood that this is not, and this is life. You will be, you will be the vortex of scholarship, as a there. So he saved me from that. 
That was his life and a great, you see. When he came to the West in New York uh, for operation, uh, he was then a general secretary, of course. No, he was the president, I said. So they said that you need an attendant. I said, why do you need an attendant? We shall go to the plane and the plane will go there to New York and there is someone to receive me there. What is the use of attendant? He said, no attendant, like that. He said, there is a few the business general secretary. I have heard from many monks that he used to take buses to go to Calcutta. So it was very, you see, frugal. That old style monks. That was from your Madhavanandaji, a, a great monk. Uh, one day, the present president, Swamananda, was telling me that uh, he had doubt regarding his book on uh, real America to discuss a point. So he was very sick then in the hospital. Then he called Swamananda and told him why he has written like this in the commentary. You see, so uh, not the commentary, the translation. It is a huge thing. And Kupuswami Shasti Mahamavadai himself wrote the foreword. Kupuswami Shasti is a great Sanskritist. India had a few Sanskritists like this. Bhandarkar in the west, Kupuswami Shasti in the south, you see, who did a lot for, for uh, keeping up in the heritage of our Sanskrit, you see. Uh, uh, so, uh, he did it and it is, uh, it is a monument. He, he wrote many other books, but uh, this translation of the Vyagaranaka was really, a, uh, you see, it is a great work. It is a, because Vyagaranaka is not an ordinary position. It is a, and exactly, he was his true, very. Uh, this thing I have seen in Madhavanandaji and in Gambhiranandaji. They used to be, you see, very thorough in uh, uh, translation, as close as possible, you see. It is not easy because always, as Rabindranath said, was that the word noble in English, uh, you see, it cannot be uh, translated in, into Bengali. All the commutations, you cannot be by translation, you cannot be in all the commutations. So it is, you imagine how difficult it is, you say, to um, even the words, of course, they do not, uh, sometimes they do it by translating as a soul, as a Atman. It is difficult to bring to translation all the commutations attached to these words. So you can imagine. Uh, what it means to uh, to uh, translate the Shankar Vashya of Vela. He did it. Yes. And during his time, that is when he was General Secretary, any book published in English, Bengali and Hindi had to go through him. Yes. Gamiranandaji is uh, uh, this book on mother, which was uh, published uh, at the time of the centenary of the Holy Mother, was put to him in manuscript. He slashed it by 50%, saying that these things are not authentic. I say, later we find many, many books, many, many things which are published, you say, without verifying the authenticity. But he was very, very thorough about this. Everything was authentic. So he slashed the manuscript by 50 percent. I said, and no one would argue with him. I said, everyone would take. Even Swami Nibban was saying that when he had talked to the authorities, I say, government authorities, to have the piling in the Belu Mart, you say, this. Uh, to protect the Belumot, uh, they, they, 
as the government uh, is providing. So without uh, talking with Sai Baba he had already talked with this. So he told me that I was afraid that whether he would approve it or not. Unfortunately, when I explained to him, he approved it. That is, everyone used to have a tremendous uh, estimation about his judgment, about his etc. etc. Even senior Swamis. That was Sri Maharaja Ji. Even I, have, I was reading the other day, this, you see, the conversation of Swami Bhutashadamdha Ji. He is saying that this was seen in Sri Maharaja Ji and he was not an ordinary Swami. So that was, you see, it. So I have talked enough. Thank you all for the patience.